aggressive attitude. No. Yeah, when you go to the games, this is they're not going to be friendly to you. Yeah, I know they're not going to be freaking friendly. I don't care about them not being friendly because I'm not going to be friendly either because I'm my team, but I don't care. A thing mode. Look at a thing mode. It is over now. 48-85. Are you kidding me? A thing mode. What a way to potentially go out for the fabulous freshman. She is absolutely a phenom. We're watching something very, very special. Coming from high school to college, one of the things that you want to look at are, you know, the past athletes that have been at that school. And a and there's not, you don't even have to do much research just to know that they've had great athletes when it comes to 4A or, you know, even sprints as well. They had genuine people and I just felt more at home than I did at any university that I took a visit to. For a freshman, you know, transitioning from high school to a college team, it's always nice to know that you're going to a coach that has had experience and knows what they're doing. Um, so just knowing that Coach Henry has done the things that he's done in the past, whether it was at A&M or at LSU, I guess it gives you some type of peace in your mind when it comes to training, when it comes to meets, you know, he knows what he's talking about at the end of the day. So it's not like you have to question him or you have to think any other way than what it is that he's telling you. Yeah, for a freshman, we've never had that kind of impact from a freshman ever. And not many athletes ever have been as impactful as she has been because she uh, is an NCAA champion in an individual event. Very few freshmen have ever been able to do that. And of course she anchored a great relay. So yeah, she's been pretty impactful. Finishing second indoors at Nationals. That was definitely a turning table moment for me. I got used to kind of I guess winning my races or just, you know, having all those experiences where I'm breaking records and I'm doing this back to back to back to back where I guess I kind of shied my mind away from, you know, the possibilities of even coming second or not finishing first. So I knew what I wanted to do from there on out onto my outdoor season. Um, I was ready to go because I knew I wanted the 400 national title. So winning the outdoors was, it was great. I was happy with it, but it wasn't really the end for me. I just, you know, did what I had to do. But the thing Mo going to the line, collegiate record, wow. It meant everything to break that collegiate record in the 4x4, especially with the ladies that we were running with. Like I said, we switched up our relay plenty of times, so being uh, that we finally uh, got one set and stoned and we all had a good race on the same day, like a good split on the same day, and it worked out perfectly. That was, it was, it was a great, it was a great moment because this is something that we wanted since indoor season. You know, if we do it indoors, we just thought, why can't we just do it outdoors? So to have both of those in our names is, it's a great, it's a great feeling. Coach Mallard is amazing. He is someone I, I literally would call him my dad. He's my dad, he's my agent, he's my track coach. He's literally everything in one. He, he works on the little things with me. I think it's just always keeping me on task. You know, there's some days where I just probably don't want to be at practice or I don't want to do the workout. He's also like a friend at the same time. And I think that's why he's pretty core, why I, our relationship is pretty strong, just because he understands exactly what I'm going through whenever I go through things, whether it's high or lows. You see what I mean? So let's just hang on, go on. Debbie, all my evening. Ugh, I don't want to hear it. I don't. Oh my gosh. I think that what makes Mo special is that she's relentless, um, she's focused, she's consistent in regards to her training and, and her folk, you know, how she prepares each and every week and every day for her competition. Saul has definitely been a huge help to this whole, you know, my season since the fall. Just because he, after a while, I mean, Obviously, your trainer gets to know you and he knows what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and how to attack whatever is bothering you. And Saul does a really great job with doing that. Um, like, I, he, he, he learned my body. He knows exactly what um, to do whenever a problem occurs. So if anything does happen, I'm never really worried just because I know that I'm in good hands. And, um, you know, after long races or long seasons, we just have to attack um, the recovery just as hard as we ta attack practice or we attack you know, the, the event. So if we have to go back to back days getting worked on, Bruce, that's, what, that's just what we have to do. And that's what Saul does to take care of me. And as she goes through training week, day by day, week by week, I kind of compare her to, you know, what that, that norm is. And so then the, the goal is trying to restore 
whatever is outside of that norm back towards her variance. Going professional is something I knew I wanted to do ever since I was, um, I would say like 16 or even before then. I just knew I wanted to be a professional athlete, I wanted to be an Olympian, so I wasn't really sure my freshman year would go this well, but after indoor season, I knew that the opportunity was going to be really great for me and it wasn't going to be something I could just give up. So I just uh, used that and just followed whatever, followed my heart, followed whatever God was telling me and I just moved on with it. I've always loved Nike. I've been wearing Nike since I probably started running track. I mean, I, I love their clothes, I love their shoes. They're like the head of all sports. So I know that their marketing is amazing when it comes to their athletes. And so I wanted to be part of that. It's part of a really big team that I knew would, would, would take care of me. But I love their shoes as well. And hopefully my shoe game could come up eventually. 2019, I knew I was gonna run the 800 at Olympic trials just because that was my quote unquote key event. That's my specialty. Running 156 was amazing. I mean, that was a, a PR for me, but deep down I look, I definitely feel like there was more, you know, for me out there and I knew that it wasn't the end also. So I was happy with the moment, I was satisfied, but I knew there was more to come. You know, the Olympic games is next and it's just time to run uh, faster and achieve more goals. The protocols we have to go through here before we depart, is it's, it's been a lot because we have to do COVID tests, we have to fill out all these forms and just have everything set and ready for when we go because when we get there, I mean, if all of our things aren't set, we're not going to be able to get into the country. I think there's pressure literally at any meet that I would go to just because everyone knows my name, everyone knows my capabilities, or at least everyone knows the times that I can run, everyone knows how I compete. I am the one person that's going to be affected by anything that I do. So no matter what pressure there is around me, it's just nice to go into these meets knowing that I'm in control of everything that's gonna happen. I am looking forward to standing on the podium, you know, the middle one in particular and receiving a gold medal that will in the future have my name engraved in it because I'm going to do that. But I just want to be an Olympic gold medalist, to be completely honest. So I'm just looking forward to that. And hopefully that comes, God willing. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, that'll be great. If not, I made it to the Olympics. I competed and I ran with the best in the world as one of the best in the world. And it's just the first one um, for now.